I don't know if everyone knows this, but we're on the ballot. Uh, I'm number five of seven on the Republican primary ballot. Primary is April 24th. A little story about that. Melody and I, I think it was two days ago. No, yesterday. yesterday. I can't believe it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. It was yesterday morning, 9.30. We were in Harrisburg to draw lots, a lottery to see who would... Uh, who would, where we would be on the ballot. And some of the only people that were there were the people running for this district, because it's an open seat, hotly contested, seven Republicans. More, uh, rep more people in, for that slot than any other slot anywhere else on, out of <coughs> over 1,000 positions, I believe, except for, except for some delegates for the presidential conven convention, from what I remember. But anyway, we had this bag and the guy was shaking it, and you draw these little cards that look like, you know, the whole game memory? Mm -hmm. and you, yeah, and they just have numbers on them, and you pull it out. Well, right when we were walking in, we were just about late, but not quite, and they were, ex he was explaining to us, the officiator, how it worked, and he said, here's our cards, anyone can look at them if they want. And I was walking in, and I just walked right up, opened the door, and looked at them, and held the number one, and I felt it in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, okay, not too long now. <laughs> So I put it down and went back to my seat. I ended up drawing 13 fifth, uh, was what it ended up being. If you drew one, you'd automatically be number one. Two things about my character are my integrity and then also my conviction. I have a little story about integrity. When I was about five years old, I was right upstairs here in the bathroom brushing my teeth, and I dropped a little bit of toothpaste on the, on the floor. And I learned young about integrity. Uh, my mom walked in on me and she said, Eric, did you spill the toothpaste? And I said, no. And, and my sister from the other room says, I didn't spill the toothpaste. And my mom said to me again, Eric, did you spill the toothpaste? And I said, no. And she said, Eric, we're going to pray. And if God tells me you spilled the toothpaste, you're going to be in trouble. And we prayed. And my mom said, Eric, you spilled the toothpaste. And she spanked me. <laughs> and it's been hard for me to lie ever since. <laughs> My conviction is in the power and the authority of the Constitution. We have three crises in our nation. We have a debt and unfunded liability crisis. If we leave it alone, um, it'll explode into defaulting or massive inflation. We have a regulation crisis in our, in our nation. Businesses are being strangled. We've got manufacturing that's going overseas. Um, manufacturing and service sector jobs are going overseas. And it starts at the federal level over regulation. Personal liberty crisis in our nation. Homes, the federal government's in our homes trying to control us at that level. They're in our schools. Uh, they're in our lives. They're in our churches. But we would have no issue with all of these items if the federal government would simply follow the Constitution. The solution is the Constitution. Um, limited government is embodied in the Constitution because the framers made it that way. The framers said, we want a limited government. And why did they say that? Because they had the oppression of England as their backdrop. Um, the average framer of the Constitution, the average delegate, was 44 years old. The youngest was 26. I'll be 26 in about uh, three weeks. The number one priority of every legislator and every president, because they take that oath, oath of office that says, I'm going to obey the Constitution, the number one priority should be, as every law comes your way, you say to yourself, where is this authorized in the Constitution? And if it's not, it should be a resounding no. The solution is the Constitution. We the people are saying, let us not be reigned in by government, but rather, let government be reigned in by us. I'm a yes person. I'm um, yes to the Constitution when it comes to No Child Left Behind, the Department of Education. It's a vote of no because it's unconstitutional, which is a yes to the Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law of our land. Repealing Obamacare is a yes to the Constitution. There is, you know, there is stuff that we can do that's constitutional. Um, stuff with international relations, stuff at an international level, and then also protecting our borders from threats protecting our country from threats internal and external um, is constitutional. Yes to protecting our borders. I'm thinking 
actually have border patrols, especially on the southern border, that can do their job. Right now they can't even do their job. Let the states patrol the borders if they want to. Um, and I'd support building a fence. You just look at the Republican Party website and they act like they're pro-Constitution, but then they talk about their great achievements, like achievements in education and you know how you want a sound regulation of business. The Constitution, none of that's authorized by the Constitution.